Hello and welcome to Rise of the Data Cloud. Today's episode features an interview with Florian Doetto, CEO of DataIQ. Florian is an expert data scientist. He has a degree in maths and computer science from ENS, one of the most prestigious universities in France, and he previously served as vice president of research and development of Exceliad. On this interview, Florian talks about machine learning and deep learning, how to bring big data analytics to everyday decision-making, data visualization, and much more. So please enjoy this interview with Florian Doetto and your host, Steve Hamm. So, Florian, good to talk to you today. It would be great if you could start by talking a little bit about your background. We know you're from France, as are two of the founders of Snowflake. So how did you kind of grow up in France to find your way to technology, and how did you find your way to data analytics? I grew up to technology very fairly young, starting programming as as young as I think six or seven. And then I got very quickly into AI and chess programs and stuff like that when I was a teenager because I was like uh, fascinated by fascinated by chess and uh, quote quote AI in the sense of like uh, chess players. Then I went to um, going to search engine and and all the data you had on the web back then in the very beginning of this century. And back then, doing web search was like the next frontier because like every kind of like interesting thing was on the web that was growing very, very fast. And gradually, I moved back in a sense to the more corporate world, going through advertising, gaming, that was also booming in 2010. And I realized that the, the next frontier, in a sense, was more an how you apply AI to the corporate world, which was growing in terms of sophistication of and use of data. And what was the idea that led you to starting Data IQ? The, the main idea was that there was a big gap uh, inside the enterprise between technologists and business in terms of how they perceive and how easy it was for them to get value out of data. And so I wanted to bridge that gap just because I'm well, I'll just like to bridge gaps. And uh, I like when people talk to one another. And so the idea was to, to build a platform where people from different backgrounds can collaborate in order to achieve things in terms of AI and analytics very quickly. Yeah, yeah. So Florian, what's in the name of the company? It's really unusual. It, it sounds like a cross between data and poetry. It's actually true, in fact, because it's a cross between data and haiku, haiku being a Japanese poem with mm-hmm. three verse. So it's a poem which is uh, to have a, a very deep meaning, but like while being very, very short, only three verse and a few syllables. And uh, the idea was to kind of like talk about data and big data while trying to do things in a more easy, small way. So it would be really helpful if you would describe the technology and how people use it. So the platform sense sits on tip on top of uh, the existing uh, data platforms of, uh, of of your organization and enables people to visually transform data, blend data together from different data sources, and build predictive models in order to have like deeper insights into the data. And so within the platform, you kind of like end-to-end get from the data as it is, like the raw data that you just got from uh, different systems to insights, forecast, uh, predictions very easily. Now, is this conventional machine learning or is this deep learning? It's both. It's both. And uh, in fact, we implemented uh, the platform over the last uh, six to seven years, continuously adding more uh, capabilities and algorithms into it. So the very first uh, version of that IQ was uh, conventional machine learning back six, uh, six years ago. And three years ago, we added deep learning capabilities. Mm-hmm. And so depending on uh, whether you have like, in a sense, a more simple business problem where you really want to understand and explain things with a whiteboard approach, you use traditional machine learning. If you've got more complex data and especially images, text, you can leverage deep learning. Yeah, yeah. 
So it, it might be nice to have a scenario of how you use deep learning, because my understanding is with deep learning, you, you just turn the algorithms loose on the data rather than doing a lot of training ahead of time. And, and the, the algorithms kind of find patterns or discover things or predict things that, you not, that a human might not necessarily have spotted or even traditional machine learning. So if, if you could explain how the deep learning works, that would be really great. Deep learning can work actually in a lot of different ways. And in fact, it's more relevant, as you pointed out, in situations where the patterns within the data are so complex that you actually need to kind of like understand the data in order to, to, to find them. What I mean here is that if you look at something like a table, a spreadsheet, In a sense, it's pretty simple data. You can find the patterns by looking at uh, the various columns and try to combine them or look at one then another. Essentially, it's just like uh, maybe, I don't know, each time 100, 200 numbers. But if you look at an image, in order to understand the patterns, you need to understand what the structure of the image is. Meaning, is it an object or not? Which positions? Do you have several layers and stuff like that? It's an image. It's complicated. And so deep learning is essentially a method where you build this understanding of the patterns of like what the image looks like automatically with the computer without having to actually describe the patterns themselves to the computer. So it learns by itself not only what you want to what you want to get as an outcome, but also the patterns within the data in order to get there. Is your technology primarily for data scientists or is it for a broader selection of people to use? Yeah. Yes, I would argue that our technology is actually mainly not for data scientists or maybe just to um, demultiply the impact of data scientists within their organization. Most of our users are actually analysts, subject matter experts, and people that want to get more uh, uh, impact from the data they have, that want to get to the next step. Five years ago, they started to do more uh, business intelligence and analytics in general. Now they need to get uh, deeper into the data, do more uh, forecasts or uh, more complex analytics and get to the next steps in a self-service way, meaning you want actually uh, people from the business to get into the data and to be able to go as far as possible, collaborating with data scientists in order to go faster. But you need really to free the data to democratize the access to analytics. And that's what uh, we're trying to do with the platform. So there are a lot of companies in the same market segment as Data Haiku. How would you contrast your company and its technology from, say, Databricks or Data Robot or Zeppel? Yeah, indeed, it's a, it's a very hot market, this market of AI and data science uh, for the enterprise, because the stake of democratizing uh, this for the enterprise is high. I think that compared to others, we, we started very early on by having this perspective of democratization, meaning uh, taking the angle of uh, the data analyst that may want to do something simple with the data or something more complex that needs to prepare the data, transform the data, do some machine learning, and really serve this, uh, this analyst as someone that you need to enable and empower within the enterprise and help him collaborate with a broader group. So serving these analysts and these teams of analysts is actually what DataIQ is about compared to others that have a more, uh, I would say, technology or infrastructure approach yeah. to uh, serving the enterprise. Yeah. Well, my sense, and, you know, excuse my ignorance, but my sense is that Databricks really is for data scientists. The data robot is really about a lot about automation, and making the, the technology available to a lot of different, a lot of people in a lot of different roles like, like yours is. And Zeppel is more like a, a collaboration platform for, for data scientists and data analysts. If you could kind of, you know, do a bit of a contrast of your, how your technology and, and your approach contrast with theirs, I think that would be really helpful to the, to the listener. Yeah, so compared to there, I would say that we are a collaboration platform for indeed for data scientists and data analysts for the broader enterprise, where uh, Databricks actually uh, focuses on providing um, infrastructure for the data engineers themselves mm -hmm. in terms of automate the transformation of the data. Data Robot focuses on AutoML in the sense of automating machine learning itself, but possibly not what, everything which is before and after. 
that yeah, and Zeppel focus on the helping uh, data scientists having notebooks of the right infrastructure and computing platform. Yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of, and we've only mentioned a few companies, but there are many, many more. Do you foresee a consolidation in this industry, kind of a rolling up so that people will maybe go to one or two companies for, for all that they need? Or do you think there's going to be a long period with, with a, lot of, a lot of different offerings out there and, and people uh, using a lot of them? I, I think that this market will consolidate for two reasons. One could be external factors like the general need of consolidation because of economic factors and so forth. And the second one, uh, more interesting, is the fact that as, a, as an organization, when you build AI, you need resilience, you need consistency, you need some form of governance, meaning you need to be able to upskill your people whatever their position in the company, and to make sure that if you set up a new way to do something, it is actually distributed within the organization in a consistent way. Because AI is something important. You don't want like to have like uh, lots of different tools with possible inconsistencies and a different way to compute a very important formula for your organization that is not the same from one tool to the other. So at the end of the day, yes, I do believe that uh, there will be only a few vendors, a few key vendors uh, on, this, uh, on this market category. Hey, I wanted to back up to something we, we talked about before was, was your technology and, and who uses it and what roles. If you could walk through a scenario of how a data analyst might use your technology kind of step by step to solve a problem, I think that would be really helpful. Yes, sure. So we could, for instance, imagine a data analyst working in a, for, for a marketing capacity, let's say, in a big consumer group. Uh, company, consumer good company. And so what he would do in the Taiku would be, for instance, to gather data from uh, various uh, advertising platforms, from sales, from historical data. He would get data about online, offline ads, possibly social media data from competitors. And he would have like all this data within his uh, Dataiku projects. And we are talking possibly millions of lines. And he would leverage the Taiku in order to clean, refine this data, find what's interesting in terms of correlation around the products he needs to work upon and the brands he needs to focus on for uh, his particular study. And maybe his output is, try is to understand what is the impact of a media campaign, what are the keywords that works better today as opposed to before. And he would use this in order to produce an informed opinion about how to spend 5, 10, 15 million of uh, worth of marketing budget for a particular uh, product category on a particular country. And so tell to the business where to spend the money, on which keywords, whether or not you should uh, bet and uh, do advertising on the weekend versus the weekdays and stuff like that. And the idea is that this data analyst is someone that has, is not, we are not talking about um, a computer scientist, is someone that has essentially a very good understanding of the product and the category of the language we are talking about in the country is focusing on. But is instead of doing that in Excel as before, essentially trying to copy-paste uh, data from various sources in order to build a PowerPoint. No, in order to be relevant, he's doing that within the data platform where he's manipulating millions, if not billions, of rows uh, and gigabytes of data in order to get something way more relevant for the digital world. Yeah. And the, uh, the data analyst doesn't have to write code or write algorithms or anything like that, correct? Yeah, correct. It's like uh, clicking in order to transform the data and do the forecast and apply machine learning. And obviously, in some situation, uh, clicking is not enough. He might, uh, he might hit some kind of roadblock where he needs to actually ask a friend, like uh, during those TV games, some help. And usually the friend is a data scientist that could like uh, look at the roadblock, write some piece of code, save it somewhere on the Taiku, and then this particular fix, way to move forward, can then be reused by other data analysts in order to be uh, more uh, self-sufficient when uh, trying to do the same kind of analytics next time. Yeah, so they can collect a bunch of tools that they've used before and use them again. Exactly, because the, the, the main issue with AI that is like such a complex problem that you actually want to be able to reuse solution from the past in order to get to the next step. If you start from scratch, Every time, actually, you won't go that far as an organization. And are the results of the work primarily presented as visualizations or in some other way? So it can be visualization, but in fact, it's almost, let's say, one third of uh, visualization 
like uh, insights you can use to better understand what's happening. One third, decision support for apps in the sense of like providing to someone suggestions or a way to make a more informed decision interacting with the data. Like uh, an example for that could be uh, when you ask for a credit in a bank, how do you provide to the operator, to the banker information about a credit score, the decision related to that score and so forth. So it's more like a in-context data. And uh, another third could be uh, applications where you actually integrate directly into operational systems to uh, completely automate a task, like uh, automate the resupply of some, of some goods. Any other task where you actually uh, directly, in a sense, use data to, to, to simplify and make a, a business process more efficient. 